Hi, I'm Katie Steckles. And I'm Peter Rollett. And Katie, what's today's mathematical object? Well, today's mathematical object is a solid of constant width, which sounds a bit like a thing that we talked about in a previous con- uh, podcast, which was a shape of constant width. Yeah. But we've now gone into three dimensions. Ah. So we've now got like a 3D shape um, <laughs> of constant width. It's got the same property. A 2D shape of constant width was like a coin, which is a 3D object. But it wasn't constant in all three dimensions. It was constant in two of them. Yes. Yeah, I guess if you're thinking about the coin, you're thinking about the kind of the 2D projection of the coin down onto the flat shape that it is. Hmm. Um, And in that sense, whichever direction you measure it in, it's got the same diameter. And um, a solid of constant width is one where you take that concept, pop it up into 3D, and you say that you have a 3D object. And again, because with the shape of constant width, the the measurement that you have to make is the diameter. It has to go through the middle of the shape. Mm. So in the sense of a 3D uh, solid, you need essentially two parallel planes that you bring together either side of the shape to to stop at the same distance apart, regardless of which way around the shape is. Um, So obviously, again, the canonical example of this would be a sphere, which is uh, the equivalent of the circle, but in three dimensions. And I can convince myself that a sphere has constant width. Yeah, yeah, yeah width. essentially. And uh, the, the kind of the nice test for this is if you get, I guess you would need more than one, but um, to fix a plane, you would need three points, I guess. So if you get three of them and put them underneath a piece of card or something, hmm. you can roll it around on the table. And you wouldn't know that it's not a sphere. If it's, yeah. a, if it's a different shape of constant width that isn't a sphere, you wouldn't necessarily be able to say, oh, that's not spheres. Yeah. Uh, whereas if it hadn't got constant width, the piece of card would sort of move in a funny way. It would wobble up and down. So the object that we took a picture of for this week's episode, which you can view at apiorical.com uh, under this, this episode, um, is three of these little black solids of constant width, which I got, um, and they're in my bag of fun maths, bits and pieces basically um and so uh chris sangwin wrote a book with john bryant and chris gave me these three balls and all i know about them is that they're solids of constant width and if you put them on a flat table and put a book on top you can roll the book around and you don't notice that there's no bumpiness to it that's it yeah they they sort of seem like they're spheres yeah, well, the, the good news is that because the, the book that Chris has done is uh, How Round Is Your Circle, which mm. is a fantastic title for a book on this topic. Um, and the good news is that you can easily produce uh, solids of constant width. And what Chris has done for the particular solids that I think he produced like a whole bunch of promotional solids to go with the book <laughs> yes. uh, and kind of sent them out as a promotional thing with it. Um, and I think I've got a set somewhere. There, there's, I've just got a magical cupboard of tricks somewhere. I just um, I worked with him at the time and he would just sort of give them out. So he was just like, here, have some yeah. solids. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I imagine because once you've got a mould for something like that, you mm. can produce them for pence. So yeah. like you just, you know, you, you get a whole bunch of them done. Um, and the easy way to make a solid of constant width is to take a solid of, to take a shape of constant width and rotate it around and create a solid of revolution. So if you fix a a line down one of the axes of symmetry, rotate it around that line, uh, you get a 3D shape. And that will be, for any shape of constant width, the resulting solid will be a solid of constant width. Um, Which is sort of cheating, because you're just essentially introducing a circle, I guess, and you know that that will work. You're putting a circle in there somewhere, so you're not going to have anything that's got different... Uh, widths in in that kind of axis i guess um and then the other directions are covered by the fact that the original thing was a shape of constant width yes that makes sense so your sort of 20p coin spun around in a circle will make a a solid in all dimensions Um, yeah and i guess if you want to imagine what that would look like it would be if you look at it from one side it would be a circle but it would have a 20p shape as a silhouette from other directions Mm. Um, and in fact this is one nice property of um solids of constant width that whichever direction you look at it from if you project it down into two dimensions you will always get a shape of constant width Um, and if you're looking at it from a funny angle sometimes they will be slightly weird shapes they won't be kind of regular or recognizable Um, but it's because it's it's one of the those funny math terms so it's uh the 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 girth of a shape of a 3d solid is the uh, perimeter of any 2d projection of it down so any shape of any solid of constant width is also a solid of constant girth (laughs) so (laughs) it's quite a nice little uh, little fact because it will always be a shape of constant width when you project it down and it will have the same perimeter i guess 
Um, so if you uh, want to make a solid of constant width and you're starting off with the very simple shape of constant width, the Rouleau triangle. So if you remember, this was starting with an equilateral triangle and replacing each edge with an arc centered at the opposite vertex of the triangle. Right. If you rotate that around, you get a, a nice sort of pointy sort of weeble wobble thing, <laughs> uh, which yeah, that's, a, that's a good description of the shape. It's got kind of a round bottom and then it's got a coney sort of top. Yeah, it's a good um, technical term. Yeah, yeah uh, and that is the solid of constant width of minimal volume per, per unit width, I guess. Um, and the maximal one is a sphere. Right. So everything else is somewhere between those two things. Um, and there are a couple of slightly interesting ways to make them. So for the... Because the, the solid of revolution works, but I kind of think it's a bit boring. So I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to consider that as properly being a solid of constant width because you've done no work. <laughs> like you just, you just took last week's podcast and then rotated it. So that's, you know, that's cheating. Um, so if you think about the Rillo triangle, what if I take a tetrahedron? The, the 3D triangle, as it's known, okay. um, and put uh, a, a section of a sphere on each face. If I replace each of the faces of a tetrahedron with a, a section of the surface of a sphere centred at the opposite vertex mm. of the tetrahedron, uh, that will give you a Rouleau tetrahedron, okay. which is not a solid of constant width. Ah. So it works in almost all of the directions, which you know for a non-mathematician might be acceptable. <laughs> um, but where you've got the edges you kind of get bits that are slightly further apart. So it doesn't quite work in all, all the possible directions. Uh, but what you can do is then round off some of those edges. Hmm. And if you round off the edges, um, I think there's a shape called a Meissner tetrahedron, which is a Rouleau tetrahedron with three of the edges rounded off okay. using, I guess, uh, another section of the surface of a sphere centered at the opposite corner but somehow differently um, and you can do that in two different ways so if you imagine a tetrahedron you can either pick three edges that all meet at a point or you can pick three edges that all chase each other around a triangle around one side of the tetrahedron um, and they will give you two slightly different versions of the Meissner tetrahedron pick one of those uh, and that will give you a solid of constant width um, so there's I think the set that they have or have previously sold on maths gear is that shape. They've got these beautiful yellow plastic ones. Uh, from my insider maths gear knowledge, my understanding is that they have a mould for making them, but they can't find a company that will be prepared to make more of them just yet. <laughs> right. uh, and there's been lots of long discussions and manufacturing issues with it. So in theory, they, they could make more of those. Um, but what they've done instead, because they couldn't get hold of any more of those, uh, was move to a slightly different solid of constant width, which someone else manufactures. Um, and these are, they're really serious, like metal, hmm. like proper executive desk toy type objects. So they're a lot more expensive. Uh, but these are not a Meissner tetrahedron. These are a different shape, which I think the people that make them call it a spheriform, which is a very sort of fancy name for something that's a bit like a sphere, I guess, in several ways. Um, and what they've done is kind of rather than picking three edges to smooth off, they've kind of averaged it across the whole shape. Um, and they describe it as being that they've replaced all the edges with an envelope of spheres. And there's sort of a diagram on their website that they've kind of they've put a series of spheres which start small at one end, get bigger towards the middle and get smaller again along each edge. And then kind of covered that with a surface like Raptor, Raptor surface around that. And that's given them the shape of each edge. Uh, so it sounds it sounds very posh and it's probably how they can justify charging so much. Um, but that's, um, you know, another way to do this. You can take. The, the tetrahedron and kind of average out the rounding across all six of the edges. Mm. Um, and I, I imagine there are probably other ways to make solids of constant width as well, because um, obviously the, the shapes of revolution, you can have arbitrarily many of those. Whatever you can do as a shape of constant width, you can create a solid of constant width that way. Um, but it will always have this slightly uh, annoying spherical cross uh, circular cross section in one direction. Yeah. Uh, whereas these, these sort of more 3D ones, I think, are a bit more interesting. Um, but yeah, so I guess the, the main conclusion from this is that if you have something that you think might be a sphere, but you're not completely sure, mm. the thing you don't want to do is measure the diameter of it in a few different directions and go, yep, they're all the same. That must be a sphere because yeah. <laughs> that is not necessarily the case, I guess. Um, and, I, you know, people people do kind of come up with these tests to check whether because, you know, maybe it's important if you've got like, you know, something engineering, something, something. Not an engineer. Yep. Uh, ball bearings, maybe it's important that they are 
uniform in shape for whatever reason. Yep. Um, you know, if if you want to construct a test for this, then you need to make sure you do something other than just measure the diameter, mm. I guess. So if you want to get in touch, we're both on Twitter. I'm at Peter Rowlett. And I'm at Stex. And the podcast itself is on Twitter at Maths Objects. Okay. We both blog at a website called aperiodical.com. Which is where you can find more episodes of this podcast. And if you have any ideas for things that you think we might want to talk about in a future podcast or any thoughts about uh, the podcast that you've heard so far, we are happy for you to drop us an email, objects at aperiodical.com. The music is Funk Game Loop by Kevin McLeod. License under Creative Commons.